to, to start off with the interview, um, a very general question. I mean, if you could just give me a quick overview of um, Ognia's results and tell me whether there was anything in particular that stood out for you during this period. Yeah, I think if I look at uh, the last year, you know, these results um, really reflect uh, a resilient performance, you know, achieved um, by everyone um, in our business, you know, continue to deliver against our strategy. Um, and it was in a really challenging and dynamic environment, you know, uh, with uh, with COVID, um, as well as with uh, electricity supply challenges that we face. But I think overall, we're really proud, you know, how the business has performed, uh, the proactive um, planning and actions by management to restore the, the group balance sheet, um, to put the company in a really strong position and basically to resume dividends again by, um, by returning one billion uh, back to our shareholders, as we actually announced this morning. Um, I suppose that if you want to pick out a highlight from our from our um, results is that, that all our uh, business performance um, throughout the pandemic um, really performed well. Um, we generate a lot of cash. Um, we've closed out on the auto agri transaction. Um, and by the internal cash generation, we managed to settle the debt and actually sitting on a cash position at year end, which pushed uh, puts the company in a really strong position um, looking into the future. Uh, I'm glad that you mentioned the, the dividends. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, we, we spoke about it. You said Omnia was able to resume dividends and returned over one billion to shareholders. Could you just talk to me on why this is such a significant achievement or why this was so important for, for the group to do? I think if you see what the group has went through, basically, if you cast your mind back, uh, what happened to us the last uh, two years, you know, in 2019, you know, Omnia had a debt that ballooned. Um, you know, we went into a rights offer at the time. Um, we raised two billion from shareholders. Um, we needed to put in a breach loan of close to six billion. Um, you know, and, and throughout um, the last two years, you know, um, the last year was in full lockdown, basically throughout the pandemic. And I think the resilient performance in generating cash uh, to doing the turnaround within the business, um, you know, focus on, on, on uh, manufacturing excellence, uh, supply chain optimization, um, reducing operating leverage in the business, and that internal-generated generated cash managed um, that we we were actually in a position that we could actually settle the debt. And that's why that is such a strong uh, a message to to be able to, to return or to distribute dividends to shareholders. Because if you look at it where we, where we came from the last two years, to be in a position where you actually sit on cash and be able to distribute uh, dividends to shareholders, um, that's something that we're really proud of. Um, and it puts Omnia in a really strong position going forward. Um, you know, this morning we mentioned to the market how we want to think about um, capital distribution, um, how we want to think about our gearing ratios. But, I mean, it's not Omnia's intention to sit on cash in the long term. You know, we will make sure that we a bit more conservative uh, in the current environment with our balance sheet. But that's on the back of the macro environment around us. Uh, you know, there's a lot of challenges with uh, the Wave 3, uh, the, the, the COVID pandemic, how is it going to pan out? You know, there's a bit of a delay in static on the vaccine rollout. And also, we also facing uh, challenges with uh, supply chain disruptions as well as electricity supply. So we need to factor all of that into our thinking on how do we think about distribution, capital allocation, to make sure that we safeguard our balance sheet for the company into the future. Omnia's revenue and profit were largely driven by a solid performance from the agriculture division. I mean, why did this sector in, in particular have such a huge influence? I mean, was there an increased focus on agriculture over the period? Or could you just talk to me on why, on why this was the case? If you look what happened in, in 2019, 2020, you know, specifically in, in, in South Africa, our agriculture performance or our segment did not put out um, um, decent results. And that includes our manufacturing component. 
uh, that sits in there. So there was a lot of focus the last year. Agriculture went through a restructure, um, specifically in, in manufacturing uh, within our Sasselberg uh, facilities. And the business came out really tops. If I look at um, the business performance, yes, there were improved demand due to the positive uh, agronomic conditions, specifically in SADC, really wet weather, um, you know, in the whole SADC region, and that affected our uh, Zimbabwe, our Zambia business, as well as our South African business. But I suppose the biggest contribution came from our manufacturing excellence, whereby you know, we um, the supply chain optimization, the manufacturing optimization, as well as the full benefit of our new nitrophosphate plant that actually came through our numbers, specifically in SADI. Um, I think on top of that, if you look at our international business, which is really exciting, which is our biostimulant business out of Australia, uh, that sells into Brazil, into Europe, into other areas, that's high margin business. We've expanded our uh, production capacity, specifically um, from the UMA drying capacity side. And we're also um, forecasting to expand our cow production out of that facility. And we can see that as being a big growth area uh, into the future. And we can see how that's starting to contribute to the overall agricultural segment. So in summary, our international business as well as the good ag agronomic uh, conditions in South Africa, um, really pushed the, 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 the agriculture numbers um, for the current period. Just uh, touching on safety, I mean, Omnia achieved a recordable case rate of 0 0.35 compared to 0 0.49 in the prior period. Could you just clarify for me whether these were safety cases in general or COVID-19 cases? These are safety cases in general um, because we operate in a manufacturing environment. Um, you know, we, we, we committed to create uh, long-term value for our stakeholders, you know, and that, that obviously goes by investing in organic, organic, but it's moving towards that greener technologies, um, you know, and also to enhance our impact on leaving behind a better world. You know, if you refer to the recordable case rate, if you look at all our business units, chemicals, mining, as well as agriculture that w that has our manufacturing component, all the RCR rates year on year improved, uh, which we're really proud of. You know, we really uh, put safety first. Um, we look after our people um, as well as the environment. Um, and not, you know, over and above the, the, the RCR rate and the safety, if you take into account the investment we've made into our manufacturing facilities, um, you know, to reduce uh, greenhouse gases, the emissions, um, you know, we've we've introduced the uh, um, Enminox catalyst in our in our uh, Sasselberg manufacturing facilities, and that had a big impact in reducing um, a carbon um, dioxide and or carbon emissions. Um, so you know, but. We don't stop there. We also focus on water use efficiency. We focus on energy use efficiency, etc. And I think maybe just to round it off is that uh, the one thing that we're also really proud of is, is 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 going up a level from a level three to a level two in a in in a, in a triple BEE uh, scenario. And that's also that's something that we're focusing on um, as a team within Omnia.